Has your firm ever been perceived as a commodity? Or as an individual, have you ever struggled with differentiating yourself from the sea of other professionals that do what you do? Well, it's happened to me. 15 years ago, my firm was hired by a prominent LA architecture firm named KAA Design Group. And we were hired to perform marketing brand communications. And I think we did a great job, in my humble opinion. Over the course of those five years, their gross billings grew by 280%. We even helped them to launch a sister division, the KAA Brand Experience Group. The only problem was this division offered the same services that my firm offered, and we were fired. Now, losing this ideal client was a painful experience, but with pain, comes gain. And what I gained was an awareness that if my firm could be so easily replaced, we were simply a commodity. And commoditization is the biggest challenge that professional services face. The antidote to commoditization is a core brilliance culture. There are three components to a core brilliance culture. One, core. Choosing a narrow focus. Two, brilliance, both developing and sharing your expertise. And then three, culture, building a marketing culture based on emotional connection. Be brilliant, be you. So step one is core, choosing a narrow focus, becoming a specialist. So why would you wanna do this? Well, it's quite simple. The more you narrow your focus, the more you increase your power. Simple physics. What happens when you combine a magnifying glass, the sunlight, and a piece of paper? Solar-powered fire starter. You take the sunlight, you magnify it through the lens, it becomes a red-hot laser, and poof, you've got fire. You can do this with water. When you narrow water, through what's called a water jet, you can cut through three inch steel plates. When you narrow your focus, you increase your power. So let's go back to this KAA story to give an example of what happens when you narrow your focus. I got a call from them about nine months ago and the owner Grant said, hey David, I just got an email blast from you with some advice and I have to say, it was really good. I get a lot of these from different vendors and I don't read many of them because mostly they're unfocused, they're all about them, and frankly, they're not really interesting. <coughs> but I actually read most of yours. And it is, the reason I read them is because they are focused, they offer useful advice, and I like your voice. Our firm is going through some changes and I'd like to utilize your voice to help our firm express our voice. Oh, this is the phone call I love to get. It feels so validating because 10 years ago, when I had worked with them initially, our firm was very unfocused and we didn't have enough expertise and we were easily replaced. But over the course of these 10 years, I've worked with over 100 different firms and I've chosen a narrow focus, brand strategy for architecture firms. So I was able to write an email that was compelling enough for Grant to give me a call and that call ended up leading to a consulting assignment. And we were the only firm considered for that consulting assignment. Be brilliant, be you. And the thing about having a narrow focus is that you start to notice patterns in your work. You see things over and over again. And pattern matching is the essence of intelligence. So through a narrow focus, it organically leads to core brilliance. Brilliance. Now what I love about this word is its dual meaning. Brilliance of course means intelligence or smart, right? But it also, don't forget, means shiny and attractive. And when you combine both those things together, it's a pretty compelling marketing mix. The reason clients hire you is because you have expertise that they don't. Let me say that again, because I think it's really critical. The only reason a client will hire you is because you have expertise that they don't. 
And so the more expertise that you have, the more you increase your power in that particular relationship. So my recommendation is to build that expertise and then share it. Now in terms of building your expertise, it really just takes time. There's no magic formula. In fact, it's said that um, don't learn the tricks of the trade, learn the trade. Joe Calloway said that. And if you've read Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, how many hours does it take to build mastery? 10,000. 10, yeah, it just takes time. So now you've built this expertise, it's time to share it. So why would you want to share your expertise? Well, as a professional <coughs> service provider, you're essentially selling the invisible. All you're selling is a future promise. So by writing or by speaking and sharing your expertise, you're allowing somebody to get to know you, get to like you, and potentially get to trust you. Really, it lets somebody sort of try before they buy. And that's really powerful. So the thing with expertise is that you want to deliver it on a continuous basis. You need to put your potential clients on a drip of steady expertise. So in my case, it was this email that arrived in Grant's e email box, the, the president of KAA, at a time when he was considering hiring a consultant and he ended up hiring. Be brilliant, be you. So as you share your expertise, my recommendation is that you do so through emotional connection. And that leads to culture. Culture. So what am I talking about here? Institutionalized expertise, behaviors, and stories that cohesively build a culture. And my recommendation is that you build this marketing culture for your firm that is based on emotional connection. Look, emotion is the glue that binds a culture together. Now this is the point where I usually get somebody to come up and says, you know, David, this whole emotional thing, it's a little too squishy for our firm. Our business is a relationship business. That's how we win. I totally agree. Well, how do you build a relationship? Emotional connection. So there's a great way to share emotion in your marketing, and that's through the power of story. The power of story has this ability to share your messages in a way that people don't feel like they're being sold to. And the power of story utilizes emotion in an incredibly effective manner. So let me give you an example. When I was launching a new project with a client, a new website, I typically give a sort of short speech, 10 minutes or so, about the background of my firm, what we do, why we do it, what our values are. And I was doing that with a client, and they said, stop. David, I've already heard your TED talk that's on your website. You tell a very personal story. It's emotional. You show vulnerability. And I already feel like I trust you. So you don't need to do this initial story. Like, All right, let's just get started. Be you, be brilliant. There are a lot of firms out there that do what your firm does. So you've got to be brilliant. Commoditization is a cancer that we must constantly conquer. How do you do that? Well, you build a core brilliance culture. So just to review, core, choose a narrow focus, Step two, brilliance. Both build and share your brilliance or expertise in a generous manner. And then three is culture. Cultivate this marketing culture based on emotional connection. So as you are in this fight against commoditization, don't try to be different. Simply acknowledge the fact that you already are. Not everybody's gonna like you, but when you embrace your own core brilliance, your authentic core brilliance, the brilliant will hire you. Be you, be brilliant.